one of the best ways to master the basics of RC flying is to spend some time with an RC simulator. In this video, we'll take a look at an inexpensive way to do just that. I spent a lot of time in simulators as an Air Force instructor pilot. Simulators allow you to practice things repeatedly and to do things that are just too dangerous to do in an actual airplane. To be effective, sims require the appropriate level of fidelity for the task being practiced. Advanced or complicated tasks require high fidelity. Basic tasks, which are what we're dealing with here, require less. If you saw my review of the Dynam Primo Smart Ready to Fly Airplane package, you saw me give a brief description of using the Gavin 6A transmitter that comes with that package and the FMS flight simulator. That combo deserves a little bit more explanation, so let's go. Using a basic simulator allows you to develop some muscle memory regarding flying your airplane. For the beginner, that primarily means getting used to the difference in bank control when the plane is flying away from you and when it is flying towards you. Some folks find it easy to switch left and right control inputs. Others develop memory aids to help. When I was learning, when the airplane was flying toward me, I told myself to point the aileron stick toward the wing I wanted to go up. After a while, Things became automatic, and they will for you too. Bitco Hobby and Dynam have some SIM controllers on their website. They allow you to control the SIM with a fairly high fidelity device. If you get one of their smart, ready-to-fly packages, the Gavin 6A radio serves that purpose without the need to buy an additional controller. All you need is their inexpensive USB connector cable that is also available from Bitco Hobby. They also have links to two free downloads. You can find them under the Manuals tab for the USB controller product on their website, along with some instructions. First is the Flying Model Simulator. FMS is a basic sim with reasonable fidelity for a beginner with several models and landscapes. Additional models are available online. The other download is for a DLL file for Windows 10 computers. FMS is an older program that is no longer supported, so it needs the DLL to talk to the new operating system. Don't let the fact that FMS is an older program scare you, though. It's taught thousands of RC pilots to fly and how to master the basics. Just follow the easy instructions on the Bitco webpage to get the FMS and DLL onto your computer. Okay, so after downloading the DLL and the FMS into your downloads folder, um, I moved it to a, a new folder that I just labeled FMS install so I didn't have to worry about all the other files in that folder. And what we're going to do then is we are going to take this D3DRM file and drop it into the Windows system file. So you can see here it's C drive Windows system. And so I'm just going to drag it over there and drop it in. And so you see I've got it right there. The next thing I'm going to do is do that same thing. And this time I'm going to drop it into the, wind the Windows system 32 folder. Again, just click and drag and drop it into the system. And so that'll get those two uh, DLL or dynamic link libraries into the systems folders so that you'll be able to talk between the operating system and the um, FMS. So now let's just install the FMS. So here we've got the SMS zip file and so we're just going to open with zip, WinZip and um, this is the one that we want to uh, these are the things that we want to, um, to open. And so we're just going to unzip it to the FMS. We're going to replace the file while it's unzipping. And then now you can see we've got the setup, the README, 
uh, and then the original two files that we had in there. So now it's just going to be a matter of clicking the FMS setup. Yes, we want to allow this to make the changes. We want to do it in English. We're going to agree to the user terms and conditions. We're going to put it in our uh, C drive because it's a program. That's where I like to keep mine. It takes just a moment to unload. And then, yes, I want to launch it. And it's opened up there behind that larger screen. And now we've got it loaded and ready to go. And so, as you can see, um, it is uh, open just fine in this Windows 10 computer. So let's uh, look more closely at the program itself. Uh, so now I've got the, the various pieces that I'm going to need to connect this to the computer. And so we've got the little pigtail that came with the, the USB cord. And so I'm just going to plug that into the little um, plug here on this end that connects the radio to the computer. Next, I have the, the A side of the USB along with this little circuit board that I'm going to plug into my computer. And I heard the computer chirp, which means it recognized it. And if you look at the bottom, you can see that there's a little red light. That means the USB is getting power. Now I'm going to turn on the radio. And the radio is now on. And then I'm going to go to the FMS um, simulator itself on my desktop and open that. It initializes. I'm going to make it full screen. And I should be ready to go. So let's go through the setup um, process for the flying model simulator. Uh, when you get it up and running and the, uh, the Gavin 6 plugged in, you'll, you'll have a display similar to what we see here. So first we go to the typical Windows kinds of menus at the top. We got the file where we can uh, specify graphics card or exit. We go to model where we can load various models. There are several that come in the, um, in the kit. I've chosen the Super Cub here. Uh, because it's similar to, a, you know, a trainer. So I select the Super Cub model. I go to landscape. You can load a landscape. Same thing. There are various uh, landscapes. This is an island, airport, um, sea breeze. I'm going to use the, um, the Switzerland because I like all the bright colors. You can click the simulation button. It gives you your keyboard shortcuts to I to initialize, pause to pause, and so forth. Turn the sound on and off. Windows in the Windows 10, uh, I've tried this out, and just selecting the window is the best choice. Graphics, you can add fog, smooth out the textures, that kind of thing. Again, this is kind of an older program, so uh, you'll see that it stops with 32-bit colors. Controls is where we want to spend a little time the first time you open it up. So let's take a look at that. First, we're going to select uh, keyboard, and there you're going to uh, be able to see how you can control the, the simulator with your keyboard. That's not what we want to do, but just to show you that it's there. So we're going to go here into analog controls. In this case, with the Gavin 6 and the Dynam interface, uh, USB interface, we're going to select joystick. And then we're going to go to Mapping, and then we're going to Calibrate. And to Calibrate, we're going to do what it says, move the sticks several times in the circle. So I'm just moving the sticks left and right. It's ailerons and elevator and the throttle and the rudder back and forth so that the software knows where the gimbal endpoints are. We're going to go to Next, and then it's going to tell me to center all the sticks, which includes the throttles. So I've got them all centered now, and then I'm going to click Finish. And so now I've got everything set the way I want, and, um, you'll, and so we'll just click OK and OK. 
And now at this point, we're just going to go and start the sim. So I've turned the, paused the, uh, the sim and turned, pulled the throttle back to get the sound down. And what I want to show you here is when I made a left turn with the sticks, the airplane turned left. However, if you were to have made a left turn with the control stick and the airplane turned right, or if when you hit initialize with the throttle down and the throttle was roaring and an airplane started to take off, what you would do would go back to controls back to analog, mapping and calibration, and this is where you would make a check. So if you were turning the wrong direction, you'd put a check mark in the inverse column to reverse the servos. In this case, I have the servo reversed for the throttle so that when it's at the low level, it at the low RPM, and when I've got it pushed all the way up, it's at the high RPM. So keep track of these things, and if you crash the first time or two trying to get these all set up, it's no big deal just all part of setting up the simulator. As you get started, just turning in circles, flying loops is probably what you're going to be wanting to do to get a sense of minor controls on the inputs and of course the infamous getting your left and right set. And so by making kind of horizontal figure eights it gives you a chance to practice with the airplane going both left and right, so you get a sense of knowing which way to turn the airplane when, like now, it's heading towards you. After you do that for a while, it will become second nature, but to start with, that's a lot. It's one of the things that many new RC pilots struggle with. Now, if you're paying attention to the landscapes, you can often find that there's going to be clues to the runway lineup when you fly around. And uh, this is one of those, this little green area. So we'll see if I can get lined up with the runway, bring the power back to land. With this simulator, it's not terribly important if you land on the runway or not. If you land softly, it won't crash. And there we go, we've got the power off and we've taxi to the end of the runway. So as you can see, the graphics are okay, they're not great, but for what you want to do, and that is to learn how to fly, go up and down and left and right, this free simulator with the USB connector to your Windows 10 computer is a great way to get that behind you. Using the Dynam Gavin 6A with the USB cord and the FMS SIM, is a very cost-effective way to get started in RC flying. Choosing a smart ready-to-fly package gets you all you need airplane-wise, and with the USB cord and free downloads, you can build your basic flying skills at a virtual airport while not damaging your model. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please click on the thumbs up button below the video and consider subscribing to the RC Plane Views channel. Click on the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos.